everybody. You're in the cinema lounge with everyone here. Uh, we are here to discuss a a recent topic that kind of popped up. Uh, I will. There's an article that was just uh, released by New York Post. I'm going to link that in the description below for you guys to read. Uh, it's a great article. But the thing we're going to react to here is, um, first up, the article is uh, millennials uh, that uh, the millennials don't really care about classic movies. And that's just bullshit right there. But uh, mm. the uh, the articles ex the article explains um, there's a study between millennials and people who are fifty, and how the movies they've seen and all that stuff. Like I said, the article is really good. Just click at the link below, read it. It's good stuff. But they have two top ten lists here. One is top ten most common movies that millennials have seen. And there's a top ten list for most common movies over fifties have seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should probably point out that none of us are none of us here are millennials. Nope. None of us were born after two thousand or in the year two thousand. No, I've been tested. I'm not a millennial. Oh, oh, you want to actually? I believe I believe millennial. Um, is uh is either eighties and nineties or onwards. And, See, and onwards. So here's the thing. Here's what I'm gonna call bullshit on because for the longest time, uh, people from 1980 until 2000 are considered a Generation Y. Then all of a sudden, Millennial comes out, and it's like, oh, from 2000 onward. But then they started to put everyone else from 1980 to 2000 into the Millennial group, which is kind of baloney because that's not what the name Millennial stands for. Yeah. Don't you go uh, be going dragging us down your shit, you know? Uh, okay, a quick quick uh, uh a quick Google search for millennial. Uh what defines a millennial? Millennials are also known as genu generation Y or net or the net generation are the demographic cohort that directly follows generation X. What exactly is the millennial generation? How and Strauss uh, define the millennial cohort as consisting of individuals born between 1982 and 2004. Damn. That's just... That's just recent shit, because for the longest time, I remember... I was like, generation... That's... They, they, they're starting to... <sighs> and uh, it, Wikipedia's uh, doing that, too. Uh, it, it's... It's yeah. confirming that. It, yeah, it's a recent. I never thing. heard anything about a millennial being after two thousand. After two thousand, I always thought that was the case because millennials stands for yeah. millennium, the new millennium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, millennium oh. should be, but the the article the article states otherwise. These are the uh, this is the generation that's that's going to. That's supposed to come of age during the millennium, and that's why. Uh, that's why they segmented us. Mm. Well, then we are millennials, then. And I can. If we're millennials, then the whole world is fucked. <laughs> I mean, coming of age, I turned seven in the year two thousand. So what the fuck? Uh, but you still, you still. Uh, you still came around when uh, when the internet was was becoming a big thing, and you may not remember the time when we had to use fifty six k modems, but uh, they certainly existed. I remember dial up. You remember dial up? Yeah, that weird <laughs> sound. <It> just... <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say now, if I realised on the 17th of July, 1993, that I was ever going to get, as, you know, lumped into the millennial, millennial group, I would have begged the doctor to put me back in. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is what society has to come to now. I mean, our, the generations have changed. I mean, I remember in high school, it was just considered generation Y, X, Y, and then Z, which is considered millennial. Or I could say it wasn't even called millennial, it was called Z, because it was like, I don't know why they call it like that, but it's just, that's just a weird, 
generation thing. Yeah. Anyways. Generation zombie, maybe. Aha! <laughs> uh Aha! -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't care what people say. I'm a 90s kid through and through. I'm not a millennial or a generation X, Y, Z or whatever. I'm a 90s kid, dude. Millennials, ha the term millennials has that uh, stigma attached to it. Uh, I think is what you're trying to say there, correct? Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> Try to make sense of my madness. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I I, can, I will still tell millennial jokes no matter what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. For my singing, my uh, my singing range and everything, my repertoire. I was born way too late. I should have been oh. born in the I should have been born in the forties. So that when uh, the 60s came around, at my age, I would have been perfect. Mm -hmm. I can see, I can sort of see that uh, uh, during the pre, uh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, who's that, who's that one? Uh, who's that one terrific uh, singer who who did the Skyfall theme? The one with the husky voice. Oh, Adele. Adele. Yeah. Yeah, that was like the '60s was kind of the the generation where they where they had a they had the Adeles. So. A lot of that fancy pants wobbling about. Sing the song. <laughs> So, which list would you want me to go through first, Millennials or the over 50s? Well, let's see. Um, millennials will start hating on people, and over 50s will make us feel old, so who knows? I note with dismay that Citizen Kane is not uh, is on neither of these lists. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. See that? So... That's the part where I call I do call BS on this, uh, and furthermore, before we go into the list portion, I want to read this par this part off in the article. A new study finds that less than a quarter of millennials have watched a film from start to finish that was made back in the 1940s or 50s, and only a third have seen one from the 1960s. When you read when you read anything, in any magazine. Or, or newspaper, online news source, or what have you, mm -hmm. that says a new study finds you got to read a new study. Really? A new study? Who conducted that? <laughs> uh, what was this the is... sampling? What was the sampling group? And, uh... well, if you scroll down, actually, it says a new survey polling a thousand millennials and a thousand Americans over 50. And where were. And where exactly was that sampling group located? Conducted by FYE.com. I mean, where in the states? What, what portion of the, what portion of our population took place in this, or decided to take place in this? When when they say stuff like this, less than a quarter, that means it's got to at least be more than a quarter. Because there's people that will choose to do, to to take part in this survey. And those who don't. Yeah. And uh, this is why we still don't have a cure for cancer. <laughs> mm. None. Everything gives us cancer. Everything. This gives me arm cancer. No. This gives me lung cancer. Okay, so start off with the uh, start off with the list. Go ahead, Mike. There you go. All right, all right, all right. I'll, you know, I'll just I'll just do millennials and over 50s and I'll go backwards from 10 to 1 okay. um, 55% have seen The Godfather number 10 mm -hmm. so this is millennials yep so 55% of them seen The Godfather which is the only one from the 70s then number 9 mm -hmm. then number 9 54. Nine zero percent uh, seen the Silence of the Lambs. Number eight, The Lord of the Rings: Return of the King, fifty nine percent. Number seven, 
Uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, 59.2%. Uh, 6, uh, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, 60.9%. Number 5, The Matrix, 63.2%. Number 4, The Dark Knight, 66.5%. I've seen it. Uh, number 3, Back to the Future, 66.8%. Number two, Forrest Gump, 74.6%. And the number one most common movie that millennials have seen is Lion King at 81.6%. Ha ha. Should we be at all discerned <clears throat> about this? It's. I'm actually not surprised, to be honest. I mean. I mean, The Godfather's at number 10, which I. I mean, The Godfather's at number 10. I mean, that's considered a classic. Um, everything else is like from the 90s and 2000s and one from 80s which is Back to the Future and yeah some of these have occupied both lists as well I notice um, yeah. I'd like to see the top 50 or the top 100 <laughs> and then we can get down to business and see and and see if, uh, if any of the films that we're thinking about any of the, the greats of the past uh, I don't know, Ben Hur, The Ten Commandments, or some something like that. Anything that uh, a Leonard Maltin critic would uh, uh, would would suggest as a movie to see before you die. Rodan, maybe. There you go. Yeah, um, the top ten most common movies seen of uh, over fifties have seen. Number 10 is The Green Mile at 6.6%. The Good, Bad, and the Ugly at 65.9%. Number 8 is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest at 66.4%. Number 7 is Saving Private Ryan at 68.3%. 6 is Raiders of the Lost Ark, 69.3% have seen it. Uh, out of the sampling group. Number 5 is The Godfather at 69.9%. Number four is A Wonderful Life at 70.5%. Number three is The Silence of the Lambs, 71%. Back to the Future is at number two on this list at number with 80%. And of course, the number one most common movie uh, over 50s have seen is Forrest Gump at 83 uh, And then when I realized that Forrest Gump was the story of my life and I was over 50... I was wanting to watch it again and again. And then I realized I was fucked. <laughs> uh. See, all right, like the only movie here that's <clears throat> beyond the seventies is "It's a Wonderful Life." And the good, the bad, the ugly. And the oh yeah, yeah. You know the one thing about It's a Wonderful Life? Like, mm. it'd be quite interesting to see who's actually watched the actual film, but I think we've all seen so many parodies of that. Everybody parodies it. It's like, we're going to have the scenario half. Like, actually, you can just tell what the story is without actually watching the film. We have this big scenario. Christmas is ruined. This person's like, I wish I'd never been born. Magical person. Okay, click. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Don't you recognize me? I want to live again. I re realize my last great. No, everybody realizes it's me. Every time the bell rings, an angel gets his face. The end. <laughs> Even Johnny Bravo made fun of it. Come on. Uh, oh, that Shrek 4 was it? That was a freaking It's a Wonderful Life spoof. Which one? Shrek 4, I believe. Or, oh. Yeah. 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 And that's not, that didn't even come out right about Christmas time, you know. It has, it has nothing to do with Christmas, and yet it's like, you know. It's a wonderful Shrek. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, so I, I just want to be an ogre one more day. <laughs> I'll, I'll read some more tidbits of the article because it's just. It's, Sorry, it's, was that a Scottish accent? Mm, trying. <laughs> you were saying, Mike? Uh, 
So I'll, I'll read tidbits of the article because, James, you have not heard most of this. I know you have the article, but I'll just read this out loud. Uh, 30% of young people also admit to have never watched a black and white film all the way through, as opposed to 85% of those over 50, with 20% branding the films boring. Oh, come on. The Marx Brothers? Uncultured Spine. I saw, I've watched some the of the Three original, Stooges? I've watched some of the original um, Laurel and Hardy stuff, and that's that's funny. Laurel, yeah, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> uh, Three Stooges, what? Who who are these kids' parents? Who are these people's parents? I want to know who these parents are. Just smack them. Exactly. I mean, I agree with I agree with James with the the whole the study thing because this normally with articles they would have like a link to the study. You see the, all the findings and all that stuff like that. I would, but uh, fye dot com is this is the, it's mainly about the company and how they're promoting stuff Bless you. about movies and DVDs and all that stuff. Thank you. Um, For your entertainment, fye. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, millennials are most likely to have binged on films of the last 15 years than on classics from bygone eras. Okay, that does kind of make... That does kind of make sense. I'm not going to say... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to really deny that. I mean, look at... Look at what we have with uh, with Netflix, mm -hmm. and uh, and how how many different shows exclusive to that um, are are binge worthy. Even back there, the only the only show that I I hear even younger audiences like teenagers and whatnot uh, still binge watching on thanks to thanks to Netflix. Are sitcoms like Friends? Oh. That's um, as for an entire as for been when you say binge watching, usually they refer to a TV show. Or are they referring to an entire string of a, a franchise I'm, of films? I'm it's because it's most likely they have binged on films. So here, let me let me scroll down further in the article because it says here. Hold on, give me a second if I can find it. They mention about da -da, here. Um, God damn it! I just da -da 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 -da. that's that's about them. Da -da 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 -da. Nope. Okay, it was something about. Nope. No. Nope. Hold on. How did you get past? How did these people get past the high school years without seeing Gone with the Wind, Sound of Music, Kill a Mockingbird, or The Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> Some yeah. of that is required viewing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, less than half millennials have seen likes of Gone the Wind, The Sound of Music, The Kill, the Kill a Maki Bear, and even The Shawshank Redemption, rated the greatest film of all the time on IMDb. Only 20% have seen Casablanca, Casablanca, whatever it is. 16% uh, have watched Once Upon a Time in the West. Only a me measly 12% have seen the Hitchcock classic Rear Window, um, though the director's psycho fares moderately better at the rate of 38%. See, oh, oh, that's, oh, that's blasphemy. Psycho is one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it's higher than a lot of things. A thirty percent—that's high because people are probably watching Bates Motel. Mm -hmm. That's why they're watching. That's why, that's why they're watching Psycho. I'm more. <laughs> um, I've seen Parts of Gone with the Wind. Haven't seen To Kill a Mockingbird. Haven't seen The Shawshank Redemption. I've seen The Sound of Music. And I almost did sit down and watch Casablanca for a podcast episode that we were going to do, but never happened. But mind you, I did change my choice of film, so... Right. I mean, see, that's the thing about me. Even though I'm considered a millennial, I'm not having a stigma against classic films. I'm trying to catch up and watch these films. Like, I haven't seen Gone in the Wind. I've seen Sound of Music at least once. Kill a Monkey Bird I've seen in school. Sean Shakespeare <coughs> I still haven't seen. I've seen Casablanca like last year, I believe. Once Upon a Time in the West I haven't seen. I've seen Rear Window for class. Psycho I've not seen, so I'm still catching up, people. So I'm not like it's not like I don't like movies. Classic movies. Yeah, I mean... I've I rewatched part of Gone with the Wind recently. I like to call I think I should 
I think they should call the first half of that movie The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that... that I'll get to watch it. <laughs> but see, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's how they. That's how they, all these ladies are talking with each other. Like, oh, look at that man right over there. Hey, that girl right... You know, the weird gossip women of the South. Uh, I know nothing about making babies. <laughs> Okay. No, you gotta put on you gotta put on your your offensive uh, racist black voice for that. <laughs> anyway, well, I, well, the thing is with like classic films, like Calamity Jane is up there on my um to watch films. You know, mm-hmm. I see, will hunt high low for it. But see, there's another spectrum to those articles, which is the people who are fifty. So on the other side of things, <coughs> they say uh, some of the over 50s appeared to have the tendency to stick to their old classics, ignoring new cinema altogether, which 1 in 10 admitting they aren't sure if they have seen a newer film uh, than 2010, and 8% straight up saying no, they have not. See, when I was a kid, my folks had me watch uh, classic <clears throat> musicals, and there was a phase of my life where <laughs> where that was that was pretty much all I saw as a as a kid for for a long time. There was a a lot of great classic MGM musicals, uh, not just uh, not just Singing in the Rain, which I showed Mike uh, yeah. previously on the podcast, but also yep. um, Anchors Away for Me and My Gal, uh, The Pirate, another. Well, these just happen to be a lot of Gene Kelly movies, but um, <laughs> um, he's a summer, great actor. So, su- summer stock. Uh, here, here's one. Here's one that can't be made today. Seven brides for seven brothers. Right. I've seen bits of that one. I've seen bits of Anchors Away and oh, Singing in the Rain. Kiss Me, Kate. Um, and uh, that just a bunch of others. I think. I I think uh, if you're if you're missing out on. If you're missing out on uh, what what makes a, a movie of that particular time period, I I I still haven't seen White Christmas all the way through. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to wait till it comes back on Netflix. But anyway. Right. Uh, you're going to like this, James, here. The next thing here they say is, uh, and while millennials be- believe that movies have only gotten more in- entertaining over the time, uh, 30% admit to having felt social pressure to lie that they have seen a old classic in its entirety compared to just 3% over 50s. Social, pre- social pressure to lie. Social pressure to lie if they've seen the old classic. So have you seen this movie? Sure, I've seen it. You know, Gone with it, Gone with the Wind. I've seen that. Sure, I've seen that. Well, they—that's—that's that's stupid because if you start, if you sit down and have a, and have a conversation about uh, about that um, a particular film with someone who says that they that they saw that and they have no idea what they're talking about, they're gonna start improvising bullshit. Mm-hmm. But then again, this article proclaims that anyone who's talking to these millennials about this are over 50. So it's probably their grandparents talking about them. You know, hey, you remember guy with the wind, Sonny? Yeah, yeah, Grandma. I, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, um... Crap. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> I have that hook uh... I just imagine a millennial just going, "Oh yeah, so totally seen this film." Hashtag gone. Hashtag with. Oh, hashtag was... the hashtag wind. Hashtag millennial. Okay. <laughs> oh, now I remember what I was gonna. Say. Oh, now I remember what I was gonna say, Mike. It it makes about as much sense as. Uh, it makes about as much sense as uh, having a conversation with somebody about uh, zombievers when you really watched zombies. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> well, that says it all. Yes. Oh my God! It actually happened. Like I, 
and I start a conversation. I'm like, hey, James, have you seen this movie? I think so. Is it called this movie? He's like, no, you watched it. And I and I had uh, and I had a conversation with this kid that I used to babysit, because uh, he said, "Have you seen Zombievers? It's such a ridiculous movie." And I and I had seen Zombies, and I got them mixed up, and we had this whole conversation about the, about the, about the movie, and somehow it, it and somehow, uh, there were no. There were no red flags going up on either side. Until, you know, we get further in, I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the movie. <laughs> then, bear of very little brain, the penny finally drops. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, it's a good point to bring that up, actually, because when it comes to genre, millennials twice as likely to choose horror as their top favorite. While over 50s, of course, are more twice as likely to pick westerns. It's because horror is a uh, easy. It's an easy stimulant. I oh, think. oh, and get better too, James. You're, you're gonna enjoy this part too. <laughs> Millennials are also twice as likely to not be bothered by too much gore or too much nudity in the older group, because they've seen all those horror films and not too too bothered by the gore or nudity. So. Thank you. I mean, I'm fine with a lot of nakedness, but I mean, horror films nowadays, have you not seen the trailers? It's like they're at a new level up. Instead of just being like, oh, I'm a scary horror thing, it's not like. <laughs> it's like, jeez. The bye bye man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, another, uh, the thing in common that these two groups agree with is. Uh, what they consider what makes a movie a classic. Uh, the top qualities of a classic film are a great plot, staying relative over time, and containing memorable scenes and or quotes. That's what they consider as a classic. Hmm. Uh, I could uh, I could I could consider a movie a movie quotable, but it would be my classic. Or or somebody else's classic. I don't know about that. That's that, there's not much to say there, really. Oh, oh, here it is. This is, this is the part I was looking for. Um, as for the different ages and as as for how the different ages enjoy their films, it appears that streaming services streaming services are still largely a favorite of the young, with seventy two percent millennials naming it as a common way they watch movies, as opposed to just thirty percent of people over fifty. Uh, mm. Younger people uh, are also most likely to enjoy films in the theater, on DVD or Blu-ray, or illegally downloaded online. Ooh. Which no one in this podcast is party to. Not one bit. Nah, we don't do that. Um, uh, oh, we got a big... We've got to be some good influence to the kids, you know. You've got to have at least one good influence in, li in their lives, and hopefully we're it. Uh, they were only <laughs> topped by over 50s when it comes to watching films on cable or TV. Um, oh, and this is, this is really good, actually, for you, because I know you, James. Millennials are considerably more finicky when it comes to picture quality, as they're found twice as likely as over 50 to say they tend to only watch things in H. D. And I know you're HD now, and you're like, I gotta have an HD quality. I don't, I don't really know how I got that stigma. Just only if people are, only if I'm collaborating with people, and and whatnot. I prefer, I in videos, I prefer them to shoot their side in HD quality, but I can watch a movie in any, in in just about any resolution. That's true, but I've seen like some stuff we watched in the past. Where it's like, where's the HD copy? <laughs> and oh, yeah. oh boy, D, damn it, everything's gotta be HD. I don't mind something being HD or whatever, but like the one thing I really don't get is how, how film and television series nowadays how dark they are. Not for the theme, but like the setting and everything. Like I've occasionally like walked in and watched my mom, you know. 
see my mum watch Vampire Diaries. And there's certain scenes and I just think, turn the lights on, you know? Or like um, when I went on holiday to Norfolk, uh, like last month or so, um, like I kind of came in sort of towards the end of um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And there were just scenes where it was just like, Turn the lights on. I can't see what's happening. What happened to the whole purpose of having lighting so you can see what's fucking going on? You know? It's oh, like, yeah. oh no, we've got to add ambience and atmosphere. Well, you won't get the ambience and atmosphere if you can't fucking see what you're watching. Mm hmm. Sorry, ran over. But yeah. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, it, it adds uh, it adds mysticism to everything. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but referring back to Fantastical Beasts, this is a spin off of Harry Potter. Do we not forget how bright the first few movies were? Yeah. How colorful they were? I mean, and then shit hit the fan. Even the spells are they're just white light, white light, white light. I'm with you with white light. Leviosa. <laughs> and then as soon as the and as soon as the third one uh, happened, uh, everything was broody. That's and yeah. and Malfoy just looked like a wuss. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, that's the uh, whole gist of that. I mean, we're millennials, and we uh, we like to watch classics. We like to you know at least enjoy them. So we're not those millennials, goddammit. Please, if you're a millennial, please watch some classic movies. I'm I'm going to actually talk about a classic movie on the main podcast. So, uh, I'm here. Saint, stick it's around. Millennials like this, that Michael Bay still has a job. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't they switch over to watching 13 Hours instead of Transformers? <laughs> At least that's a good Michael Bay movie. We all might need to go sit in the corner and cry. <laughs> we, we, need, we need to reassure ourselves as we get ready to talk about our main topic. So uh, thanks for listening and watching to this uh, Summer Lounge. Comment below, uh, are you a millennial? Do you watch classics? What do you think about this topic in general? Uh, make sure you subscribe. Do you find it rather condescending? Yes? No? Yeah, let us know. Uh... Let us know, people. I know you're watching. I know you're listening. Um... Subscribe for more content. Uh, the podcast will be coming up pretty soon, so stick around. Also, for- if you're a millennial that um, you know breaks the stigma, give the video a big thumbs up. Ooh. Yay! Yay! <laughs>